Where did the name Cassandra come from? Actually, it's uh, there, there's two pronunciations that can happen. It's Cassandra or Cassandra, right? It's not C A S S E N D R A. C A S S A N D R A. Cassandra. Hector was built during the thrift protocol days. Nobody uses thrift anymore. The way you will integrate with CQ uh, with uh, Cassandra is CQL, Cassandra Query Language, right? Something that we have you are very familiar with. Why am I saying that? It's exactly like SQL. Correct. Syntactically, it looks very, very similar to SQL. Got that? Uh, and Priam, uh, I think very few people use it. Uh, it's all open sourced. By, all these tools were open sourced. I think by Priam was open sourced by Netflix. And two Indian developers came together in Facebook. One came from Amazon's DynamoDB. The other one came from Google's Big Table. Came together in Facebook and created Cassandra. You said that some of you do not know about a hash map. Imagine a hash map to be like a um, hotel. What's a hotel? This is the corridor where you walk, and there are rooms. There are rooms here. Got that? There are rooms here. Let's assume we have taken a vacation with our friends or family. Doesn't matter. So you think. The father would be in room number one, mother will be in room number two, son or daughter will be in room number three. We all live like that, don't we? Oh, you disagree. Oh, how will we all go into the same room, right? Why? Because we're one family. Think of that as we all have the same hash function. You got that? Now I know that might not make sense at the moment, but think of it like this. Uh, let's say employee ID. And then you've got the F name, you've got the L name, and let's assume the salary. And this is super important for you to understand. The reason because when you throw an analytics job on it, you better need to know where the data goes. That lookup thing, I'm actually building that, right? How it works, right? So this employee ID could be, let's say, A, B, C, one, two, three, alphanumeric. It doesn't have to be just numeric. This particular value, right? A hash map. The reason it's called as a hash map is this particular what they call it as key is hashed. What is hashing? It's an algorithm that converts it to figure out, boss, which room will you go? Are you getting this? So let's assume this value. Let's say this particular record. I'm going to call it R1, record one. After hashing, figures out that this is the bucket, the bucket. That you need to go to. Got that? So this record is coming and sitting here. R one. Make sense? Suppose you want to fetch. It's exactly the ult, the reverse. In other words, what will you do? You'll say that. Look, if you want to fetch record one, you better give me the employee ID. Otherwise, I can't fetch it for you. Otherwise, I'll have to give you a complete list of all the uh, you know guests in my hotel. Make sense? So then, what I can do? I can say that. Hey, A B C one two three. Can you please get me the record? What will the hash map do? It hashes it again, goes to the same bucket because the hash map is repeatable. You give the same key, you will get the same hash once or a million times. It's repeatable. Got that? It'll go to the same room and fetch it back. Make sense? So in some sense, there are two operations that are possible in a hash map. You can either or insert same thing, or you can. That's right. So it's a data structure which allows you to save data and fetch data. In um, computer science lingo, in terms of if you want to find out what the performance is, you can think of it like that. You could, right? Given a phone number, fetch it as quickly as possible. Okay. So in uh, computer lingo, uh, this thing, a hash map gives you O1 performance. That's the fastest performance you can get. Got that? Now, can you just Think slightly ahead and figure out that if all of you are Cassandra nodes, and if all of you are responsible for these buckets, and if I implement a hashing algorithm using the hashing algorithm, can I not find out which node will have data? So that lookup is nothing but the list of buckets with the IP addresses that every node knows about everyone else. This is called as token distribution. Get that? 
and the hashing algorithm that Cassandra internally uses is called Murmur 3 hash, which was not created by Cassandra. It has been created by Austin Appleby in 2008. Lift and shift. Why? Because it's the best performing algorithm at the moment. Got it? Are we super clear about this? So the way Cassandra works is purely based on hashing. And I will talk about what this key is in the context of primary key. I'll be introducing a couple of new concepts, which is going to come up a little bit later. But do you understand this? This process of converting it through a hash into a key and then positioning in a particular node, this process is called as partitioning. Or who does it? The partitioner does this. Clear? The partitioner is basically nothing but the hashing algorithm. If you really look at it, it's as simple as that. It's not complex at all. So now, how can you make your analytics look for the data the most efficient way? If you knew about this topology, can you not say that, look, I'm going to, I know you are not going to have data beyond this. That can you just do analytics only on this part? Don't worry about the rest of the stuff. I'll ask him to do it or I'll ask that node to do it or I'll ask this node to do it. Can you not structure it like that? The Spark Cassandra connector is aware of this topology. Uh, Spark master says, you need to go out there and execute this. What will the uh, connector do? It will say, I am aware of the tokens that you are responsible for. You just give me data only for that. Don't worry about any of the other buckets. Just give me the data that belongs to you. Make sense? The term to be used here is called as data locality. I work only on the data that is local to me. Remember, that node is split in half. One half is Cassandra, the other half is Spark. Got that? So that particular Spark worker will not worry about the data which is in the other nodes. Only worry about what you have. Cassandra is more on the OLTP side of things and Spark is on the OLAP side of things. Both have orthogonal requirements. So some of these large organizations have taken a strategic decision. I can't basically give out the name, right? But it's not an IP or anything secret where they have strategically said that, look, I will have a separate Spark cluster. I will have a, sp a separate Cassandra cluster. No splitting you in half. You got that. If you want to do analytics, you basically pump data from Cassandra onto Spark and do whatever you like. Got that. They didn't want to get into this model. And this is probably one of the most uh, prevalent implementations that is out there. He has information about the system.local and peers. Got that. If you remember what we talked about a little while back in terms of the partition tolerance, we basically said that this IP address has the data. This IP address has the data and this IP address has the data as well. If you really think about it, the moment you specify replication factor equals three, the bigger question is where are you specifying that? Right, where are you specifying that? Are you specifying that at a Cassandra level? Right, in that if you specify it at a Cassandra level, when you install Cassandra, you say replication factor equals three, then what will end up happening? Some other table want to, wants to have replication factor equals five. Won't allow some other, uh, you know, um, uh, data might be stored in replication factor two. Who knows? Makes sense. Not everybody has to follow the same best practice. So clearly it cannot be at a Cassandra level. It cannot be at the configuration level and not at the time of installation. In RDBMS view, let's assume you are Oracle. What do you have to do before creating a table? Can you all tell me? What do you have to do? Uh, before creating a table, create a database in case of MySQL or create a schema. Correct? The equivalent of that in Cassandra exists. It's called as key space. So what do I do? Create or replace key space. So I have, let's say, two key spaces. One key space says replication factor two. And there's another key space which says replication factor three. Table A, table B. If I insert data here, how many copies will be stored? How many copies will be stored? Is this metadata that can be stored in lookup tables? So imagine if I'm inserting a data and the hash value is this. So these two are the replicas of this. At the same time, this also could be an owner of a hash. Not could be. Is an owner of hash. What would be its replica? Replica 1, replica 2, replica 3. Right? So in some sense, this node has a replica of not just that but also this node and also is responsible for its own buckets. 
a system could be a combination of databases uh, working backwards from your use case. Cassandra is also called as shared nothing architecture, also is called as a database of databases. You are working with your data. You've got nothing to do with his data set. Makes sense? In fact, you've got nothing to do with him as well. It's basically Cassandra as a system is making sure that the data is replicated here and here. They don't share anything. If you are not available, makes not or rather impacts nothing. It implies nothing to the rest of you. Shared nothing architecture. That's the model. Right. So you kind of denormalize as much as you can work backwards from your queries. Those are the only two mantras you need to work backwards from nothing else.